Hi, Claire. My name is Jessica Penalber, and I'm from Louisiana in America. And I have questions about Anne Boleyn from the other Bowling Girl movie. Did Anne Boleyn bring the French fashion to the court herself, or were others influencing this fashion movement? Thank you, and I hope you can answer these questions. Thank you to Jessica for that excellent question. Anne Boleyn spent eight years from summer 1513 to late 1521 on the continent, first at Margaret of Austria's court and then serving Queen Claude in France. This was a time when the Renaissance had swept through mainland Europe and both courts were sumptuous and stylish. In his biography of Anne Boleyn, The Life and Death of Anne Boleyn, historian Eric Ives writes that we know that in later life, Anne was excited by fabric and colour. And he believes that this love may have had its roots in her time at Margaret of Austria's court, a court that was resplendent with lavish fabrics of every kind. And her time in France had an impact on her. In his poem on her life and death, Lancelot de Carle, secretary to the French ambassador, writes, Wherein her graces she so refined that no one ever considered her English in her ways but native French. And he mentions assets and exquisite graces that she had fortunately acquired in France. The majority of portraits of Anne Boleyn, which are sadly not contemporary and date to her daughter Elizabeth I's reign, show her wearing a French hood and a French gown. Maria Hayward comments that Anne Boleyn's upbringing at the French court ensured her preference for and promotion of the French. And George Wyatt, grandson of the poet Thomas Wyatt, wrote of Anne, albeit in beauty, she was to many inferior, but for behaviour, manners, attire and tongue, she excelled them all, for she had been brought up in France. But what was this French fashion and style? Berlin from the National Portrait Gallery, you can see that Anne is wearing the stylish French hood with a velvet veil hanging down the back and the bilaments decorated with pearls. She also has pearls decorating the neckline of her kirtle and of course in her bee necklace. Her dress is black showing her wealth as black fabric was expensive due to the difficulty in dyeing it and her neckline is square and wide that it is pushing the sleeve heads of her tight fitting sleeves slightly off her shoulders. Her oversleeves are dark brown and may well be sable. We can see the black work of her smock at her neckline. Her style is French. Her gown is the French gown which was popular during Henry VIII's reign and during Anne's time as queen in the 1530s it featured a close fitting bodice, a straight across natural waistline, closely fitted upper sleeves and deep turned back cuffs, a full skirt with flat front and V opening, decorative underskirt and undersleeves. And it wasn't a dress as we think of one today, it came in various pieces. The gown with attached skirt which opened in the front at the centre and the skirt split. The split skirt of the gown would show the kirtle or a decorative underskirt. Then there was a placard to cover the centre front opening and then of course the sleeves. Anne is of course also wearing the French hood. This framed the face and allowed some hair to be seen. The hair was traditionally styled in a centre parting. It was much smaller and more elegant than the English gable hood and consisted of a neat textile hood decorated with jeweled borders. But the hood wasn't just one piece of headgear, it was made up of a few different pieces too. The first part was the linen cap or coif, which protected the hood from the natural oils of the hair. When wearing a French hood, this cap would have been set back on the head so that the hairline could be seen when wearing the hood. It could be plain or it could have a frilled or pleated edge like the one we see in the National Portrait Gallery portrait of Anne Boleyn. Then there was a decorative band known as the bilament. This was pinned to the undercap at the point where the hair crossed over the head. 
This gave the hood height. This filament could be plain or decorated with jewels or gold. Then there was the frontlet or nether filament. This was an optional decorative piece or pieces pinned to the front of the cap following the shape of the brim. And then the veil. This could be worn hanging down the back as in the portrait of Anne or pinned up like in the Holbein portrait of Jane Seymour. While Anne Boleyn was very French in her style, it's a myth that she introduced the French gown or French hood at the English court. She may have helped popularise the style at court, being queen consort, but as costume expert Bess Chilver pointed out in her article on Tudor clothing for the Anne Boleyn Files website, versions of both forms of hood are seen from the latter part of the 15th century and Catherine of Aragon and Mary Tudor, Queen of France, were wearing them at court before Anne's rise. Here is Mary Tudor wearing the French hood in a portrait that is believed to date to around 1516, so quite a few years before Anne came back from France. And the portrait of Lady Mary Guilford shows her in a French gown in around 1527, before Anne became queen. It's also a myth that Anne Boleyn made long sleeves and turnbacks fashionable so that she could hide her extra finger. There is absolutely no contemporary evidence that Anne had an extra finger on one hand, and deep turnbacks were fashionable before Anne became queen. Most of the portraits of Anne Boleyn depict her wearing a French hood. But as Lucy Churchill pointed out in a talk she did for the Tudor Society on the 1534 Anne Boleyn Medal, Anne Boleyn chose to wear the English gable hood at important times. For example, she's depicted wearing one in the table plan for her coronation banquet on the 1st of June 1533. She is depicted wearing one on the 1534 medal, and she wore one to her execution on the 19th of May 1536. Perhaps at those key times she wanted to emphasise. So thank you again, Jessica, for that excellent question. Do you fancy being part of one of these fan questions? If so, then please do check the description for this video because there are details in that telling you how to submit your video. Thank you, I'll see you very soon. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel, round about there. And of course you can click the bell to be notified and give me a like and leave me a comment. I'll see you soon, take care, bye bye.